Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be going over all the tools I use to build the vehicles you see here on this channel. I get a ton of comments and messages asking about what tools I use and what tools are needed for someone getting started in the hobby. Today's video will hopefully answer all of those questions. Now keep in mind what tools you need will depend somewhat on the type of RC vehicles you plan on building. I mostly build 124 scale cars along with 110 scale on-road cars and crawlers. Most of the time I'm working with plastic, but if you're building different RC vehicles or working with different materials, you might need some different tools than what I'll be showcasing, but a lot of them should still be relevant. Also, I won't really be mentioning any name brands, aside from some tools I think are especially good and are worth getting that specific one. This video is not in any way sponsored, and all the tools you see I paid for myself. If you want to get name brand tools or pay extra to have all your tools match, go for it. If you're on a budget and want to piece your tool collection together bit by bit with lower cost items, that works just as well. I'm not here to tell you what brands to buy, just to show you what tools I use. Let's start with screwdrivers. I've accumulated quite a collection over the years of various size screwdrivers to fit any size fastener I might come across. This little cobalt quick change screwdriver set is pretty handy. I picked it up on clearance a while back. The biggest thing is making sure you choose the correct size screwdriver for the fastener to prevent you from damaging it. Another thing you'll want is a good metric hex driver set. You'll find many fasteners that require these tools and they're a lot nicer to use than the Allen wrenches sometimes included with the kit. You can find RC specific hex driver sets on many sites for a wide cost range. You can find cheap ones for a few bucks, especially if you're willing to get them in pink like what I have here, and they've been holding up just fine. You also might want to consider a hex nut driver for removing nuts. These are especially nice for removing wheels. I've always just used cross wrenches that usually are included with a kit or ready to run vehicle. If I really need a driver, I'll just go to my regular metric socket set and choose the size I need with either a quarter inch hand driver or hand ratchet. I don't really have a need for a RC specific nut driver set, but they are out there and you can get them pretty cheap as well. Something you'll definitely want is a nice selection of pliers. I usually use either these needle nose or larger pliers depending on what I'm doing. Tweezers are also really good to have, especially if you're working on smaller vehicles. I don't currently use any, though reverse action tweezers and pliers can be really nice, especially for painting. You press down on these to release them instead of pressing to hold the object. Something else I would consider essential are some good side cutters. I really like these Tamiya Modeler side cutters. They are nice to use, especially for cutting parts off of trees, and it cuts very well. I only use it for plastic to keep the blade sharp, and it's been a great tool that I would definitely recommend. I also have some larger side cutters that I use for metal. While on the topic of cutting, you'll also want a good hobby knife. I use an X-Acto knife and have a variety of different blades, including some saw blades, which can be used for things like styrene and balsa wood. I also find that razor blades often come in handy. Body scissors and a body reamer are a must if you'll be working with polycarbonate bodies. The scissors will help make the edges smooth and the reamer makes it easy to create holes. You also might want a hobby hand drill, which is very useful for smaller scale builds. I often like to drill out the holes on 3D printed parts and model car parts to ensure that they are large enough. Of course, for larger jobs, a power drill or drill press can be very helpful. I've also used hand files quite a bit. These are a set from Tamiya, which have come in handy many times, especially for body work on model cars. A rotary tool is another item I really couldn't do without. There are a lot of different options to choose from. One recommendation would be to choose one with multiple speed settings. Yet another must-have item is a soldering iron. What I use is a basic one from Radio Shack, which gets the job done, though getting one with variable temperature settings is really what you'll want. I'd also recommend getting one of these helping hands holders as well, it makes soldering a lot easier. I often use both a ruler and a digital caliper to measure various things throughout the build process whenever necessary. That's about it as far as the tools I use that are pretty much a requirement to build the cars I often showcase on this channel. There might be some that I'm forgetting, so feel free to post any that you use in the comment section below. Here are several tools that I feel are optional but can be very useful, starting with a hot knife, which you've probably seen me use many times before to chop up model car interiors to fit on a RC chassis. It makes doing this effortless and has been a really helpful addition to my collection. I got this precision pick set from a clearance bin a while back and they've been a nice tool for deepening panel gaps. 
For the sake of transparency, this is one item that I received from CowRC and didn't purchase, but I would honestly highly recommend a magnetic work mat such as this. It's great especially when working with small screws that like to disappear into the void once they hit the floor. If you're doing a lot of racing or drifting, a turnbuckle tool and a setup station are something you'll want to look into. If you do decide to invest in a setup station or a turnbuckle tool, do a little research and get something that's quality. Shock pliers can come in handy when assembling shocks. I usually just use standard pliers and a rag to protect the shaft, but this is really a better tool that's worth the investment if you build a lot of shocks. I do a lot of painting with spray cans as they're generally cheap and require no cleanup aside from just wiping the nozzle, but an airbrush is a really nice thing to have if you really enjoy painting and want to add a lot of detail to your builds. I picked up a cheap compressor and airbrush kit a while back and have had a lot of success with it, though I'm sure I'll be upgrading to something that's a little nicer at some point in the future. For the average hobbyist, I don't think you really need to invest hundreds into your airbrush equipment, at least not to start. For just basic airbrushing tasks like you often see me do, the inexpensive equipment I use is more than sufficient. I use a digital scale to figure out the weight of the small scale cars I build. The weight can impact the performance, so it's something I'll often keep track of. The final optional tool I can think of is a 3D printer. As the cost of entry-level 3D printers continues to come down to the point where it's less than the cost of many RC cars and kits, as well as more RC-related files becoming available, including the many items that we offer on Patreon, it's easy to see why more and more RC hobbyists are adding 3D printers to their workshops. 3D printing is a hobby in itself and does oftentimes require some tuning to get the best possible print quality, especially on lower cost printers, but you can do so much with 3D printing as is often showcased on this channel. It's certainly not a requirement to get into the hobby, but if you're a custom builder, it's a fantastic tool. So with all that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. Those are many of the tools that I use to build the RC cars you see on this channel. I'd like to know what tools you all use and what you recommend. Be sure to post them below in the comment section. That's all for this video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.